10 years. I've had this Rubik's cube for 10 years and not one time have I gotten past this point. Yo, how's it going? Keegan Robin here and welcome to Expositions episode two, a series where I teach you the magic behind my Instagram photography. Today, what we're gonna do is combine some levitation photography with some motion blur photography. And using Photoshop, we're gonna create an image like this. Let's get to it. Well, here is our setup. This is where we're gonna be shooting. So for my photography, I use a Canon EOS R. Also, this wide angle Samyang 14 millimeter lens. Take a look at that. This lens is great because it gives you a huge wide perspective. So let's put this guy back on. I want this to be a low angle shot. So I'm gonna line up the lens with the table. If you don't have any of these lights, it's totally fine. You can set up the shot next to a window and use natural light. But I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do in case you're interested in the future using some lighting. The first light I'm gonna use is this Godox LED panel. So this light we're gonna to point towards the Rubik's Cube, just like that. And then I'm gonna go get my second. The second light I'm using is a Godox SL60W, relatively cheap, amazing video light. Both of these lights, by the way, I'm linking down in the description. Very affordable if you're interested in buying some lights, so you can check them out down below. I'm gonna leave this blue shower cap thing on so that the walls look blue. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is focus as close as I can to this Rubik's Cube. So I'm focusing in and there we go. Right now we see the light in the shot, so I have to lift it up a little bit. We're really looking good now. So camera settings for this shot. We're looking for motion blur. When this spins around, we want this to look a little bit blurry, so we need a slow shutter speed. What I did with my last picture is set the camera to one over 30, and that I found was really perfect, so I'm gonna leave it like that. My f-stop is at 2.0, so we have a blurry background, and the ISO to about 200. So the most important thing to remember is to keep your camera at a slow shutter speed. One over 30 is a great starting point to try. Now I'm gonna hang up the Rubik's Cube. All I have is a little bit of fishing line hung up around the top of this thing. And the nice thing about a Rubik's Cube is I can just stick the fishing line in the cracks here and it just hangs without me needing to use tape. Let's set it up right in front of the lens. Take a look at this. The shadow of the Rubik's Cube, not touching the Rubik's Cube itself, sells the effect. We need a little bit of space underneath the Rubik's Cube. So we need to think about the future when we're shooting a shot like this because we're cutting together in Photoshop two shots. First shot, the Rubik's Cube is gonna be spinning. I'm gonna do this. Second shot, really quickly, I'm gonna move the Rubik's Cube but not move my body or my head or my face. And we're gonna combine those two shots later on in Photoshop. All right, everything is set and we are ready to shoot. I'm gonna hook up my intervalometer, also called a wireless shutter. I think I'm gonna create a video about how to use this and why it's so important for photographers to have. I'll put the link down in the description. My intervalometer is programmed to take three pictures and then wait a couple seconds and then take three more pictures. So in between those two sets of photos, I'm gonna get rid of the Rubik's Cube. The easy way for you to do this would be to just have a friend behind the camera triggering the shutter. Okay, ready? Here we go. Simple. All right, so now it's time to go into the photo editing and Photoshopping process. I'm not gonna do anything too complicated, so if you're a newbie at Photoshop, then this will be a great, maybe introduction to Photoshop. And if you're already a pro at Photoshop, then this will be a walk in the park, a breeze. Here are the two shots that I chose to use. This one here and this one here. Now these are gonna work really well together because my head doesn't move at all. I'm gonna apply one of my presets to make editing a lot faster and also crop the image and add some lens corrections and a bit of transform to make the table lines straight. There wasn't really any light hitting my hand, so I'm just gonna brighten it up a little bit with a brush. That's it for the edit now. We need to copy the edits to the other picture so that they look exactly the same for Photoshop. So Control or Command C and make sure everything is selected except for local adjustments 
and spot removal. And we're gonna click the other picture and press Command or Control V. Now they look the same. Next, we're gonna hit Command or Control E on both images to open them in Photoshop. So while we're waiting, why don't you head down to hit subscribe or the like button or both? Okay, so both images are open in Photoshop and the first one is our main image. Click the lock button on that layer so that we can edit it and rename it to, let's call it main. Now head to the second image and all we gotta do is click and drag it over to the main image. Drop it right on top and place it right in the center. Okay, now we have two layers down there. Now we don't need that second image open, so let's just close it for simplicity's sake. Now back on the first shot, let's rename the layer to stay organized. Let's call it background. And now we're gonna align these shots before we move the background to the background. <laughs> so turn the opacity of the background layer to about 50%. Now we can see both images at the same time. As closely as possible, I'm just gonna line up my face here. A good trick to doing this is to look for blurriness and try and make the thing you're lining up as clear as possible. That looks good, so let's put the layer opacity back to 100%. All right, it's time to put that background layer in the background, so drag it underneath. Now we're gonna use something called a layer mask, and if you don't know what that is, I'll explain. The layer mask button is right here. It's a rectangle with a circle in it. Now that creates a white rectangle next to the image, and that is your new layer mask. Now to explain this super clearly, I'm gonna add a random image I'll delete it later, but I'll show you how this layer mask works. I'll add a layer mask to this mountain. Now, how masks work is everything that's white you can see and everything that's black you can't. So watch this, with a brush, I'm just gonna paint a black circle on the layer mask. And you'll see that it's revealing everything behind that layer. And check out that mask, you can see the black circle that we painted. So, with all that in mind, now we're gonna take the final step of the entire process, so use the brush tool, set the color to black and just paint on the layer mask. We wanna reveal the background. And the background is my face with no fishing line. And with that, we are done. Now you are armed with the knowledge of how to make an object float and spin or create some motion blur at the same time and combine it all in Photoshop. So I am very eager to see what kind of stuff you guys come up with. You know, like what objects you choose, the lighting, the location. So tag me in your Instagram shots or send them my way. Or I'd love to see what kind of stuff you guys are inspired to make. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell below the like button. And I will catch you on the flip side. Peace.